More insight into China's economy. We're joined by Henry To. He's the Chief Investment Officer of CB Capital Advisors. Henry, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Please, pleasure to be here. Henry, not a pleasure for the producer price index. It was down 5.4% from a year earlier. It's the biggest year-over-year -year fall in nearly six years. Henry, why are factory prices taking such a hit? I think factory prices are taking a hit because you have lower energy prices and metal prices. As you mentioned, they're at their lowest point since June, July 2009. So it's not surprising to me that they're feeding through into lower producing price indices. Well, exports also looking very bleak. Uh, exports in July dropped 8.3 percent from a year earlier. And Henry, so much of China's growth has been linked to the export sector. So how much of a concern is this decline? It's a bit concerning to me in the sense that um, so some of it is due to the drop in Eurozone exports. There's about 12 percent of that, a 12 percent drop in Eurozone exports. And I attribute that to the temporary, to the, to the temporary um, fears over a potential Greek exit back in July. So I think that will recover. But the more concerning part is exports to Japan, which is China's third largest trading partner. It's down 13 percent year over year. And I think when you look at where Japanese consumer spending is going, it's going to be very hard for China to keep that up to Japan. Well, you know, Henry, part of the issue for exporters, uh, be it to Japan or be it to the European Union, is the relatively strong yuan or renminbi. The, the Chinese currency has held steady against the U.S. dollar, which has been very strong lately, and that is really hurting exporters. Do you see the People's Bank of China taking some action here and letting the yuan depreciate? I think it's too early to, to expect any, any easing or any potential target in, in lowering the yuan because there, there's a need for China to keep this currency strong at least until November, December of this year because that's when the IMF makes a decision to potentially put the yuan into the SDR, the special drawing rights basket, to make it into an Asian regional currency, reserve currency. And I think the yuan is going to be, continue to be strong over, over the next several months. Well, you know, that's really affecting China's competitiveness with regards to being the cheapest manufacturing destination. There's been so much competition from the likes of Vietnam and Bangladesh, and the government has therefore launched the Made in China 2025 initiative. Henry, tell me more about that. Can that be a game changer? I think it will be a game changer. I think it fits the Chinese model of manufacturing development perfectly because it's inspired by the top-down driven German and Japanese model, which is perfectly suited for the Chinese economy. And the, the Made in China 2025 initiative is especially great because it's very comprehensive. It recognizes that China needs to move up the value chain in terms of manufacturing. It can't compete on lower costs anymore. But at the same time, it knows that Chinese companies needs to compete with German companies and Japanese companies. And there's a lot to be that they need to do in order to do that over the long run. Can the Chinese manufacturing industry be viewed with the same regard, with regards to, to quality as the German manufacturing industry? I think you can. I think when you talk about history, where, where the global manufacturing has been back in the 1970s, as you know, Japanese manufacturing quality was not there, at least not up to the US standards or German standards, but now it is. And I think the Chinese being very innovative, being very intelligent, they could, they have a structure to do that. But what, it needs, but what the Chinese needs to do is really collaborate with other countries, other companies, build some strong global brands, talk to other cultures, because frankly speaking, the 21st century is about brand building, and there's really no, not many Chinese brands out there that's globally recognized right now. Yeah, definitely an area that needs work. You know, Henry, despite this bad economic news, we did see the mainland Chinese markets rally on Monday. The Shanghai Comp up almost 5 percent, Shenzhen gaining 4.5 percent. Is this largely due to speculation that the government will step in here and inject more stimulus? I think so. I think the Chinese stock market, the Chinese Asia market right now has stabilized. I liked it when the Shanghai Composite was at 3,500. I don't like it as much right now because the valuations on the forward to price, price to earnings ratio basis is at 14, which is a bit rich for me, especially compared to Chinese A shares or Chinese shares trading on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. I think there's been some speculation about that. I think it's going to consolidate, stabilize in, in the 3,500 to 4,000 range for the next several months. Well, Henry, what kind of stimulus action do you think we can see from the People's Bank of China and when, keeping in mind 
Inflation is at its highest level this year in July, up 1.6% from 1.4% the month before, but still well below that government target of 3%. What do you see the government doing? I see the Chinese government taking a wait-and-see approach right now. I know exports were very disappointing, but when you look at credit growth, it's at double digits right now. When you look at Chinese housing prices, it's stabilized. The latest data that I see is up about, on, on an average basis, is about, up about 2% year over year. And frankly, the, the last time the PB, PBOC, the People's Bank of China, cut rates was late June. So it's only been, been about six weeks. So it takes some time for the stimulus to work through. I think the, the 5 trillion yuan um, stabilization fund for the stock market is sufficient at this point. I don't see the Chinese government taking any stimulus approach, at least for the next several weeks. All right. Always a pleasure. Thanks for your insight. Henry Toh, Chief Investment Officer at CB Capital Advisors.